Good. Dokter Pari ini belum masuk lagi. Iya, tadi dia keluar sebentar. Bentar dia. Oh, ada kan? Uh, CP-nya Pak Pati kok kok hilang. <laughs> Hah? Hilang. Ya kemarin. <laughs> Ke, ada, ada dua hari ini Pak Gunawan, yang satu ini. lagi uh, virtual. Enggak, udah saya kirim dengan Pak itu, Pak Parimi di bawahnya. Cuma satu. Ada dua itu. Yang, dua ya? yang, yang satu pile itu ada dua. Yang satu pile uh, Pak Pati itu dua, Pak Pati dan ya. Ya. Uh, ya. Parimi, Dokter Parimi. Ya. Betul, teman isinya di saya kok, kok ke satu ya? Loh, kok aneh ya? <laughs> kok aneh ya? Ntar saya lihat dulu. Pak Nandang ya. Pak Nandang, ntar. Kok aneh? Belum masuk lagi, Pak. Parimi, Pak. Ya, itu sebentar dulu. Tunggu sebentar. Mm. Udah saya kirim penandang coba. Ya Pak, boleh Pak. WA ya Pak ya? Ada. WA, WA. Iya. Ada. Nah, ya ada. Coba. Di Wood. Ah, di wood. Kalau, kalau ini ada Pak. Ada. Saya kirim penandang coba. Sorry. Tadi ya, sepotong. Kok aneh ya? Bisa ah, ke bawah. Cuma, sa cuma satu. Bisa nggak ke bawah begitu. Iya. Padahal filenya sama itu. Sama ya, Pak. Ini nunggu Pak Parimi dulu Pernah, atau? Ya, ya. Iya, sebentar tunggu. Dia Pernah, nanti nggak bisa masuk. Ya. Ada. Masih bisa ada. sih, Pak. Ini kan uh, di admit terlebih ada. dahulu. Nanti ada. sambil ke Parimi. Oke, ada. Ya. Udah, ya. dibuka aja. Coba. Sorry. Tadi jam 9.59. Iya, iya. Ya, oh, ada ada protes. Iya, iya. Oke, oke. Cuma satu. Bisa oh, ini masuk Pak Parimi. Iya. Oke. Padahal Pak Yelnya sama itu. Sama ya, Pak. Ini nunggu Pak Parimi dulu atau? Iya, Pak. Iya, sebentar tunggu. Dia nanti nggak bisa masuk. Ada. Masih oh, bisa okay. nih, Pak. Pak uh, uh, Dokter Parimi, it's okay, good. Looking good. Ya, sebentar tunggu. Dia bisa masuk.
lupa saya ucapkan terima kasih kepada seluruh peserta yang telah hadir dalam seminar hari ini baik melalui media Zoom maupun Google. Selanjutnya acara seminar akan dibuka dengan sambutan dari Ketua PAI kita yaitu Profesor Dr. Insinyur Dadang MSC kepada Bapak Dadang kami persilakan. Pak saya ucapkan terima kasih kepada seluruh peserta yang telah hadir dalam seminar. Oke, okay, thank you Miss Lia for the time. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning for all of you. Uh, welcome to virtual seminar on management of Spodoptera frugiperda in Indonesia. Uh, this is a third serial virtual seminar held by the Entomological Society of Indonesia uh, that will discuss about the important topic for Indonesian agricultural sector, particularly for the corn production. As we know, the Spodoptera frugiperda is a relatively new pest in Indonesia. So we should explore the search and adopt the effective, efficient, and environmental friendly control strategies of this uh, insect pest. So by conducting this seminar, hopefully Entomological Society of Indonesia can contribute to the government, I mean Indonesian government, in managing and controlling the destructive uh, species of Spodoptera uh, rugiferda. Uh, in this opportunity, I would like to thank to Dr. Pati from Profiti Link. Uh, we know you expert for mating disruption, a new technology in insect pest control. Thank you also to you for giving me a chance to visit your mating disruption field experiment in Karawang, West Java. Hopefully, hopefully you can share your experiment here in controlling uh, Spodoptera frugiperda by using the mating disruption. Uh, the second to Dr. Srinipas Parimi from Bayer Crop Science. Uh, I with the Dr. Professor Andi Trisiono, I think, also from the Gajah Mada University, and Dr. Taufikur Rahman from the Bandung uh, Technology Institute. Uh, we are very impressive when we visit your field experiment in Vietnam last year in Spodoptera Frugiperda Management Program by using the transgenic corn. So, based on your successful experience, we would like to ask you to share here. Uh, the concept and methodology in using transgenic corn crops to give the effectiveness and prevent the insect resistance occurrence. And the third, Pa Gunawan Stio uh, from the Prima Agrotech. I know you very well, Pa. And of course, I know your good experience in producing the biopesticide for controlling pest and disease. I think your product now are the big share in biopesticide markets. Thank also Pak Gunawan for the giving me to visit your field experiment in uh, Pengalengan, Bandung uh, last July. Thank you, Pak. Okay, then Pak Nandang, M. Holil. I think this from Bio AgroLink yeah, as moderator. Thank you, Pak Nandang, very much for your time uh, in the weekend is uh, today. I think uh, many people go to for the vacancy, but uh, you here with us for to be the moderator. Also, I have to thank the All uh, Entomological Society of Indonesia Virtual Seminar Committee, led by Dr. Purnama Hidayat, with the member, Dr. Yayi Munara Kusuma, Dr. Aras Melin, uh, Najirun Mubin, Ms. Lia Nurul Alia, and also Ms. Putri and Mr. Agus Sidwan, who prepare and arrange this uh, virtual uh, seminar. Lastly, on behalf of the Entomological Society of Indonesia, thank you to all Entomological Society of Indonesia members and all participants who join and participate in this uh, virtual seminar. Have a nice seminar. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. 
Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Berikutnya kita akan memasuki acara inti yaitu presentasi dari para narasumber yang dilanjutkan dengan sesi diskusi yang akan dipimpin oleh Bapak Nandang sebagai moderator. Kepada Bapak Nandang kami persilahkan, time is yours. Pak Nandang masih terima yep. Ya, yeah. oke. Okay. Selamat pagi, good morning. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi, Pak. Uh, I would like to start with the uh, presentation. So then, uh, first maybe uh, we will invite uh, Dr. Uh, Patis Rigiri Raju from uh, what he calls uh, Propifri in, in Inc. So he has uh, been working with in, in uh, several multinational companies. Uh, he's a, a PhD from uh, uh, what he calls Virginia Technology, Technology University in US, and uh, he has been experienced uh, with the mating disruption works and also uh, insect behavior. Uh, he has been working with several uh, institution and as well as now currently he he's uh, leading it as the rice director and the field development of uh, Provifi uh, Incorporated. Uh, Uh, he actually he has been based there in Indonesia to lead an Asia Pacific uh, uh, field development. Uh, now we would like to invite Dr. Apati. It's time. Time is yours. Thank you, Pak Nandang. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, let me share my screen. <clears throat> Can you see my screen? Yeah. Yes. You can be maybe with the uh, what it calls uh, uh, the, yeah. Okay. So first of all, um, uh, I would like to thank you, thank the organizers for giving an opportunity for Provivi uh, to present uh, about uh, the new technology, which we call as a mating disruption. So in my presentation, I will take you through what mating disruption is because it's a new technology and people um, would really like to understand because most of the insect insecticide uh, pest management has been understood very well. And today we will also have an opportunity to um, listen from Dr. Parini about uh, the new technologies such as uh, um, uh, GM crops. So mating disruption is a revolutionary tool, which is you know, kind of really important for us for uh, uh, row crops. So, and then my uh, title of the presentation, as you can see, is an area-wide sustainable management of fall army worm. So I will cover this you know, revolutionary tool. What do you really mean by area-wide sustainable management? So let me also take an opportunity to um, introduce Provivi. Provivi is an emerging company company using pheromones to protect crops from major damaging insects. Okay. So uh, my name is Pati. I'm the director of field development for Asia Pacific region. Um, I, was, I was based out of Indonesia for, for almost a year. Because of the COVID situation, I had to come back to my home country. Um, and then I'll, I'll take every opportunity to go back to Indonesia, start working on the field development plans. So going to the next slide, you know, I would like to introduce you to semiochemicals. You know, semiochemicals are the molecules that are used for communication between animals. You know, uh, we have uh, we have several ways of communication, but as we have evolved from um, smaller organisms to um, humans, we use you know several other ways of communication. But in insects and animals, for example. There are several semiochemicals that are used for communication. So those can be broadly divided into pheromones and allelochemicals. The pheromones are the intraspecific action chemicals, which is between the species. So, uh, and allelochemicals on the other hand are interspecific be between the species. So let me give you an example of pheromones. Pheromones are like uh, specific for each species Which, is, which will not disturb other organisms, other insect species. It's between, they could take fall army worm, for example. So it's between fall army worm, males and females. Okay. So th this can be either released by females in certain insect species, 
uh, uh, females or it can be released by males also in certain species. Or allelochemicals on the other hand are, can be broadly divided into allomones, tyromones, and cinnamones. You know, for example, allelochemicals are, you know, plants will release certain chemicals where, um, where the insects can be attracted to, you know, uh, and the clues can be from the, from the, from the plants. At the same time, there are certain insects, insects uh, uh, predators or parasitoids, uh, which will detect the chemicals that are released by the insects to find the, you know, predatory insects. So it can be allomones, chiromones, or cinnamones. The plant released ones are called chiromones. So broadly, these are interspecific in action. Okay. So let's talk more about pheromones. You know, uh, what are pheromones? Basically, pheromones are the natural compounds produced by insects that acts as a messengers you know, that will alternate the behavior of the other individual insects. So these are usually pheromones are released by, you know, we are not really, you know, uh, uh, aliens to pheromones because we have been using pheromones in multiple crops for monitoring purposes. And we all know that pheromones that are released by an by, uh, insect, it is usually a wind bond. So it is released in the wind. And there are several roles that pheromones actually provide, not just for mating purposes. It helps the insects to find a mate, or it, it helps the insects to find a food. And also there are some alarm pheromones that we see in aphid species that are used for escaping from the predators. So there are trial following pheromones, there are alarm pheromones, there are sex pheromones. There are several kinds of pheromones which are like intra, interspecific, intraspecific in action. Pheromones uh, um, are involved in you know, finding a mate, which are called as sex pheromones. So they are usually released by female insects to attract a male. As you can see in the bottom over here, let's take for example, this is uh, an insect or a female insect which is releasing a pheromone into the, into, the, into the cloud or into the environment. So it produces a plume, odor plume that we call it as. And then as you can see, the concentration of the odor plume gets reduced as, as it progresses into the wind because it disperses into the wind. And based upon the wind direction, it creates a pheromone cloud around it. So this is a natural thing that is occurring in females, in, in insects. So what we are doing right now is we're putting these pheromones into the traps or into the monitoring devices to attract and, and trap these insect species. We have known about pheromones used in traps. So how does it usually, uh, usually happen? You now males that are trying to find a female, they can detect this odor plume over a mile. A single female that is calling, you know, the male can detect it over a mile distance. So it, it really induces an upwind surge, trying to find a mate, you know, in order to find the, the female that is releasing the pheromone. As soon as it comes closer to the pheromone source, the visual attractions, you know, the compound lights of insects, they play a major role, which, which really you know, increases the detection of finding a mate, even in the dark. Okay. So once it find, tries to find a female mate in here, you know, it tries to copulate and then, and then this next generation. That is a usual trend that happens in insect species. So let's understand how pheromones can be used or how pheromones has been used in managing the and pests. Because lepidopteran pests, not just lepidopteran, but polyopterans and other species, you know, they have, we have been using pheromones quite a lot. But in lepidopteran species, it is more pronounced. So pheromones can be synthesized artificially. You know, the same naturally occurring chemical source can be produced synthetically and can be used in different ways to, insect, to, ways to control its populations. As you can see in the pictures, they have been used as a monitoring devices. The monitoring devices are usually a sex pheromone trap, you know, which is kind of an aggregation, you know, monitor whether the pest is present or not. The second way is to understand the mass trapping. 
mousetrapping is usually um, you know, to control the, the number of individuals present in a larger hectares. Often mass trapping is ineffective because it is inefficiency of the traps, because all the individuals that, that are coming to the trap need not be trapped. So we're targeting very less individuals or killing the less individuals. The third one is attract and kill. You know, attract and kill is, you know, mixing with chiromos, which is kind of a food additive, and then which is a kind of feeding stimulant and used with insecticides and then that you attract and kill them or when they feed on it. The last one is a revolutionary tool which is called mating disruption. Mating disruption is also called a sexual confusion. So sex pheromone applied throughout the field as a sprayable or a source of dispensers, you know, can be used for mating disruption process. So in the next couple of slides, I will talk about what mating disruption is. So what is mating disruption? Mating disruption is very simply put forward is confuse the male insects so that they cannot find a female. Sounds very interesting, right? So we're not trying to kill anything in here. We're just confusing the male so that they cannot find a female to mate. If the female cannot mate, then it does not produce viable eggs. And if it does not produce viable eggs, there won't be next generation of larvae feeding on the insect crops. So, when the males do not find a female, the mating process is disrupted, which causes mating disruption. So as it, as it is used more often, you know, the reproduction is prevented and there are very less offsprings that are produced in the next generation. So where we have seen many, many instances where next generation is lower and it becomes lower and lower as we use more, more of mating disruption year round. So traditional insecticides, which always aim to eliminate insect larvae, which is kind of a, you know, uh, it's not a preventive control. It is a, it is, you know, after we see the damage, we try to make an insecticide application to kill the insects. Here, mating disruption is always used as a preventive application. Since it is very species specific and a preventive method of application that hinders the next generation of insects, it reduces insect population over season after season. So how does the mating disruption work? Okay. So we all understand this, you know, can we use these traps as mating disruption devices or uh, can we use these little loots as mating disruption devices? We'll see more about that. Okay. So when a female insect releases a pheromone, it is said to be calling, right? You know, it is calling the male insect to come and mate with it. So the male insect can, in some cases, detect a single female over a mile away. So it's a very, uh, the plume, it travels through the wind and it is, in fact, it is, uh, you know, affected by temperatures and relative humidity. So it can, the female, the male insect can detect the plume, odor plume from a natural pheromone source coming out of female insect over a very long distance. And the male gets attracted towards as an increasing concentration, as we have seen in the previous slide. And it will surge as an upwind flight, crisscrossing and try to find a female. Until he finds a mate, he will keep flying around. Right? Now, I want you guys to imagine you're trying to find your friend in a very dark room. Okay. It's a pitch dark room, lights are all off, and you're trying to find your friend. It's a really large room, okay? Now, the only thing that you can hear from your friend is whispering, okay? Whispering your name. Now, imagine the same situation where you have a really loud music, okay? In that loud music, would you be able to hear your friend whispering to you? It's very difficult. It's very, very difficult, right? So you will not be able to find your friend in a dark room with a loud music, your friend is whispering your name. The same thing, it's the same principle in mating disruption. So the loud music is nothing but the pheromone cloud that we are trying to create to saturate the environment with pheromones, which is very similar to the females that are actually emitting inside the field. The females are calling in the field, but at the same time, we're trying to saturate the whole thing with 
really loud music, which is nothing but the pheromone cloud. So the female's weaker pheromone signal cannot be detected by the males, so the mating disruption is effectively done. Okay. It is very simple. It's not really a complicated process. But the complication is how do we produce these pheromones in a larger quantity with cheaper active ingredients so that these, are, these can be used in row crops? Row crops are nothing but large hectares, you know, a low input uh, farming, which is nothing but our, you know, rice, corn, soybean, and things like that. So the, the pheromones are very costly to manufacture. So that is the reason we use milligram quantities in loose. Okay. But how do we really produce mating destruction? Mating destruction has to be done with larger quantities in grams of quantities that you have to saturate the whole field. So Provivi has a proprietary biocatalysis process, which we use as a low cost raw materials to start with, reduce the number of steps that we need to synthesize these pheromones, and we can produce in a larger quantities. So that gives us an opportunity to serve the farmers in row crops. So traditionally, high cost of synthesizing insect sex pheromones has been a barrier. So we broke the barriers, and Provivi is one of the few, very few companies who can actually do this. So that we can really adopt this technology in low cost, large hectare row crops. So Provivi's affordable pheromone products will enable really us to you know, help the farmers to come back these pests like uh, fall army worm, for example. Okay. So it gives us it gives, gives me an opportunity to introduce you to, to, to Provivi. As you can see in the picture on the right side, the three individuals. The center person, uh, her name is Dr. Frances Arnold. She is the Nobel Prize winner for chemistry in 2018 for the directed evolution of enzymes. So we use the same process of engineering, bioengineering and biocatalysis process to produce pheromones. Towards her right is our CEO, Pedro Coelho, and towards her left is our CTO, Peter Minfold. So these three individuals have set up a company with to really help the farmers to combat uh, insect pests in row crops. So what are really benefits of mating disruption? The first thing is it, because it is in species specific, it does not affect the beneficial organisms. And it does not impact higher animals. It is a non-target species. So the second one is it is non-lethal. Um, it is not lethal for the environment. So, and it is not lethal things. So it's not really susceptible for the evolution of resistance. It's like what we see resistance, insecticide resistance, in many insect species, we, do, we don't see behavioral resistance uh, for mating destruction products like pheromones. Important thing is there will be no residues and it, it is affected throughout the pest cycle. And uh, we can really introduce to this to area-wide utilization to reduce the populations to very low level. And we can even eradicate the populations that we have done, we have seen uh, striped stem borer eradicated in Spain because of the mating disruption. And since it is very uh, easy to adopt and it is non-lethal, it can be, it can, we can achieve organic certification in some instances, depending on the formulation. Development, development and registration are often promoted by local governments. And uh, it, you know, the, ma the major in important thing to understand is we can really use this in integrated pest management process, okay. especially in conjunction with monitoring. Economical stability of the farmers can be improved, sustainable, pro sustainable produce can be produced, preservation of beneficial insects, introdu introduction of predators and parasitoids can be used. There will be no residues, and it really helps to reduce the health hazards, especially the residues. How, what is a delivery technology? The delivery technology that we are that you're using in Asia Pacific region in Indonesia um, is dispensers. So these dispensers that you see on the left side, uh, which is you know installed in 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 the in the corn crop in Indonesia, these are called dispensers. Dispensers have a liquid pheromone 
inside sealed in a low density polyethylene bags or a sachets, which you call as a dispensers. So the dispensers have very small pores in them that will release the pheromone into the, into the environment that it creates a cloud of pheromone in the field. So these are, these are, these are uh, you know, placed throughout the field at regular intervals. So what are the challenges of mating disruption? So the, the major challenge of mating disruption is the adoption by the farmers in Asia Pacific region. As we know and understand that the land holding of the farmer is very, very low, less than 0.5 hectare. So the ch challenges of mating disruption is it can be adopted in the larger hectare range, lack, larger hectare range, not in small hectares. For example, let's, um, let's take an instance of, this is a, you know, aerial view of corn production field in Indonesia. And these small little squares that you red squares that you see are the land holding of the farmers. It can be 0.5 hectare, 0.8 hectare, and so on and so forth. If mating disruption around this patchwork of individual growers is adopted in a scattered manner, it does not work. So it has to be an integration of the farmers in a larger hectares. So we need to put these dispensers in a larger hectares. The minimum hectares that we understand is about five hectares or more than that for, for corn, for example. For rice, what we have known is it's a minimum hectare required is a four hectare crop. So a bigger, larger area of the farmers need to adopt this technology in order to work. So that is the biggest challenge. And also it is an opportunity for us to work with larger groups of farmers. I'll talk more about that in the next few slides. So adoption of the fall army worm uh, dispensers for mating disruption technology. This we, have, this we have done this in several countries like Mexico. Time power party. Okay, I'll, I'll just wrap it up. Yeah. Yep. So um, we have seen that uh, you know in in, uh, in 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 Mexico, we have seen that in pheromone introduced crop or. PFP plot, what we call as pheromone formation practice. We have seen a reduction in number of insecticide applications by more than 48%. And in, in the several places where we have higher pest incidence, we have reduced it to more than 38%. So it's an opportunity to reduce insecticides to a larger extent. And we have seen a higher yield, consistency, higher yield that can be utilized when this, when, this, when this technology is utilized in larger hectares. And damage is also reduced quite a lot in the, in the, in the later stages of the crop. So let me um, uh, briefly explain to you that we have seen that fall armyworm incidents are causing a lot of damage in the vegetative phases, but we also have seen fall armyworm damage in the generative phases affecting the ears. This is seen in Indonesia as well. So in Indonesia, we have been doing research uh, in uh, Sumatra and uh, Java Islands, where you can see the, the stars. And uh, presently we are testing the, the dispensers and uh, we are going into the large plot mating disruption files uh, this season. Okay. Yeah. So with that, I'll, I'll close my topic and uh, thanks for listening to me. Okay, thank you, Mr. Pati for a uh, uh, brief, I mean, uh, comprehensive explanation about the uh, mating disruption. So now uh, we would like to go to the second uh, uh, speaker. So then uh, uh, discussion we will uh, maybe uh, uh, conduct after uh, all the three speakers uh, presented the uh, pres I mean, materials, then we can open the question and answer. So then we would like to invite uh, uh, Gunawan Sutio, so he has the uh, background on uh, agriculture economic from uh, uh, University of Sumatra Utara. And he, he, he is the very uh, successful uh, uh, businessman. And now uh, he has also the uh, lead of the ABI is the bio, bio industry, by uh, the association, uh, what I mean is the, the lead of the ABI. And uh, he he's uh, founded uh, he's a founder of the 
uh, uh, and also the marketing and research director of Prima Agro, Agrotech. And uh, it's time, it's yours. Uh, 20, 25 minutes, Pak Gunawan. Please. Hello. Ya, Pak. Terima kasih, Mark, waktunya. Ya, silakan, uh, Pak. Terima kasih buat Pak Nandang, Pak, Pak Nandang juga. Uh, nama muda ya. Saya mau coba mempresentasikan dalam bahasa Indonesia. Uh, thank you, Rady. Yeah. Because my presentation is uh, English, so I will share about our presentation in Indonesia. It's better. Ya. Yeah. Oke, okay, thank you uh, for the times. Terima kasih, Pak, waktunya. Jadi kita uh, akan membahas fungsi biopesticide dalam bentuk apa? skala industri ya untuk pengendalian Oke, okay, terima kasih. Jadi biopesticide ini kenapa harus dalam bentuk uh, skala industri? Pertama, uh, skala industri itu akan memberikan ekonomika scale, di mana selama ini pengembangan daripada biopesticide itu banyak mementingkan skala-skala kecil, di mana Kedua adalah konsistensi dan efektifnya tidak pasti. Nah, kemudian masa simpan daripada produk tersebut itu banyakkan uh, terlalu cepat sehingga ketika terdeliver sampai ke petani itu adalah masalah paling besar. Nah, ketiga dengan tanpa adanya skala industri, otomatis uh, skala pendistribusian daripada biopesisa itu sendiri akan jadi masalah. Nah, keempat tanpa adanya skala industri, otomatis daripada pengembangan teknologi biopes ke depannya juga akan susah. Oke, okay, jadi apa yang, apa yang menjadi uh, acuan utama supaya biopesticide itu dapat efektif di, di petani ya? Pertama, itu daya simpan. Daya simpan itu harus minimal dua tahun. Kedua adalah virulensi. Virulensi artinya begini, ketika kita memberikan atau men men menjual suatu produk sampai ke petani, itu memastikan adalah petani itu menerima fungsi daripada virulensi itu yang cukup tinggi. Nah, banyak kan selama ini fungsi yang diterima petani itu tidak nyata ataupun ada klaim mengatakan bahwasanya biopes itu sifatnya lambat, tidak cepat. Nah, kenapa tidak kenapa efeknya lambat? Karena pertama, ketika dihasilkan daripada biopes tersebut, tersebut kontaminasi tinggi. Nah, kedua, dia tidak waktu soluble sehingga aplikasi daripada biopes tersebut menjadi sulit, sulit. Nah, keempat dan kelima adalah bagaimana strategi untuk mengaplikasikan. Nah, di sini kita bahas lebih lanjut, di mana produk-produk yang dihasilkan oleh Prima Agrotech memiliki masa simpan minimal tiga tahun. Nah, di sini ada data yang kita sudah ujikan dari 2017 sampai hari ini, itu bahwasanya mikroba yang kita jual sampai ke petani itu benar-benar dalam kondisi efektif dan ada. Nah, bagaimana dia berubah? Ketika kita menjual satu produk ke petani, dia membutuhkan waktu memecah dormansi. Jadi dia memerlukan waktu untuk 12 sampai 24 jam dibiarkan dulu. Nah, ketika apa? Ketika produk tersebut dibiarkan 12 jam atau 24 jam, dia akan memecah dormansi dan siap untuk dipakai. Nah, ini bagaimana kita mengembangkan mikroba-mikroba kita di dalam laboratorium, di mana kita mengembangkan dalam strain dan yang yang, yang murni dan memastikan itu virulensi. Terus kedua, ketika diproduksi tidak ada kontaminasi sama sekali. Oke, okay, dan ini adalah water soluble. Nah, kenapa water soluble? Karena untuk melakukan pengendalian terhadap hama dan penyakit, kita membutuhkan bentuk-bentuk daripada uh, yang dapat disemprotkan. Karena kita membutuhkan uh, memastikan daripada ini uh, bebas tersebut bisa kena ke hamanya atau minimal sampai ke daerah tempat tinggal hama tersebut sehingga potensi potensi hama tersebut untuk tempat tinggal dia memiliki sumber inokulum. Nah, yang paling penting dari daripada pengendalian daripada biopesticide tersebut adalah kita harus memastikan daripada apa hamanya, hama sasaran utamanya. Kedua, mikroba apa kita mau pakai? Nah, setelah itu waktunya kapan? Nah, waktunya kapan untuk aplikasi? Karena contoh seperti ulat ya baik di ulat spermatera ataupun ulat-ulat di penggerai batang padi 
itu pasti ada penerbangan. Nah, penerbangan tersebut akan akan meletakkan telur. Nah, apabila ada peletakan telur pertamanya, kita upayakan segera mengaplikasikan dengan mikroba apa? Mikroba yang tepat. Kemudian keempat adalah teknik aplikasi. Teknik aplikasi itu sendiri adalah bagaimana kita menyemprotkan daripada bipes tersebut di bagian mananya. Contoh penyerangan daripada ulas berukara biasanya ada di pangkal daun. Kita utamakan penyemprotannya mengenai ke pangkal daun. Nah kedua contoh seperti di padi. Di padi itu kan wereng atau hama-hama lainnya dia tinggal di pangkal batang. Nah artinya penyemprotan tersebut harus kena ke daerah sasaran. Nah, yang kelima yang paling penting adalah interval. Jadi di dalam uh, teknologi biopes lebih mementingkan interval aplikasi dibandingkan dengan dosis aplikasi. Karena uh, populasi mikroba yang dihasilkan itu cukup banyak. Nah, interval ini menjadi poin penting. Ya, poin penting untuk dipahami karena ini adalah uh, akan memberikan efek yang lebih pasti. Lanjut ini. Oke. Okay. Interval yang kita maksud di sini dalam biopes kita bagi menjadi tiga bagian. Pertama preventif. Preventif itu diberikan intervalnya 10 sampai hari setiap tanaman dan biasanya pada fase tersebut belum ditemukannya hama atau penyakit. Nah ini yang paling penting. Kedua kuratif. Kuratif itu ketika kita melihat bahwa saya hama itu sudah mencapai atau sudah ada hama berapa hama atau penyakit itu dalam skala kecil. Artinya ada potensi hama di situ yang sudah pasti dan kita harus lakukan dengan interval yang lebih tinggi. Nah, interval tersebut adalah 3 sampai 5 hari. Nah, ketika outbreak adalah hama itu di depan sudah sudah banyak sekali. Nah, itu memerlukan teknik aplikasi yang lebih intens. Nah, biasanya 1 sampai 2 hari sekali dilakukan pengulangan. Tapi apa pengalaman kami selama ini, apabila kita melakukan teknik preventif dengan baik, untuk kuratifnya juga jarang terjadi. Nah, ini contoh adalah bagaimana infeksi daripada mikroba mikroba atau entomo emah entomopatogen terhadap sebakteria fungibida. Satu ini adalah dengan biovari basana. Kedua dengan BT basis tuberensis. Nah mungkin para teman-teman di dalam zoom meeting ini sudah paham tentang bagaimana cara kerja daripada si entomo entomopatogen ini atau mikroba ini. Yang penting adalah bagaimana menyajikan ini ke petani. Jadi di sini apa yang prima aku lakukan adalah bagaimana kita mengemas mengemas daripada mikroba ataupun isolat tersebut sampai di petani sehingga petani itu dapat menggunakannya dengan cepat dan tersedia kapan saja. So poinnya di sini. Nah ini ada contoh-contoh in, uh, apa uh, infeksi daripada endomopatogen. In ya ada infeksi karena BT, ada infeksi karena bivaria juga. Oke, ini lapangan uh, uji kami dengan di ini di Sumatera Selatan dan banyak titik juga untuk pengendalian uh, dan uh, bagus ya daripada untuk biopesi tersebut kita bisa lakukan dalam skala kecil. Artinya petani itu yang penting dia mengamati dan dia bisa melakukan preventif, otomatis uh, serangan terhadap hama tersebut juga bisa dikendalikan dengan baik. Jadi kemenangan daripada produk tersebut adalah kita bisa melakukan ini di skala-skala kecil di petani manapun ya dan ini cukup gampang tersedia di toko dan harganya sangat murah. Nah, ini adalah kita punya flyer untuk bagaimana cara mengaplikasikan daripada produk kami tersebut ada dua produk ada BT Plus dan ada Metalizep yang semua ini sudah memiliki izin edar dan sudah diujikan di Sperpera Fungipeda. Terima kasih waktunya Pak. Sampai sini Pak. Pak Nanda. Pak Nanda masih. Ya Pak Nanda. Lupa. Nanda sudah uh, di unmute. Terima kasih Pak Gunawan atas uh, pemaparannya yang uh, sangat komprehensif mengenai bio bio pestisida bio insektisida yang sekarang uh, dimiliki oleh Prima Agro. Uh, Uh, then uh, the third speaker, we would like to invite uh, Dr. Srinipas Parimi. So uh, Srinipas Parimi, he holds his PhD from uh, Nebraska University. 
Uh, now he he works for Bayer Corp Science in Singapore as a regional resistant management lead for Asia Pacific. Uh, he has a uh, uh, written several uh, books and uh, published several journals, and also as a uh, as the peer, uh, uh, what it calls uh, in several journals. Uh, he he lead for also the as the representative for industry in the four army worm expert in the Asia uh, from Crop Lab Asia, and uh, as an active member for IRAC insect resistant uh, activity uh, in the Crop Lab Asia. Uh, Dr. Parimi, so we would like to invite you, and time is yours. Yep. Thanks, Padadang. Uh, at the outset, let me thank uh, you know Padadang for inviting me to be part of this uh, event. Um, let me know when you can see my screen. Okay. Yes. Yes, we can. Can we be? Okay. Uh... So what I'll do is for the next few minutes, I'll try to uh, uh, kind of share with you what we have been experiencing since uh, Follow Me Home entered into. Um, uh, this part of the world. Uh, and, and it's very important for all of us that uh, we realize that it's a pest that's going to be here for a long time. And, and that's that's what its ecology and behavior tells us. So any management practice that can be deployed uh, uh, in an integrated fashion with other, other techniques or approaches is always good, okay? Having said that, uh, the outline of my presentation would be, uh, as, as you see there, uh, I'll briefly introduce you to the topic. Uh, I'll take you through what are the BT Con technologies in, in Asia and talk more about the actual technology that's working against uh, follow me worm in this region and few takeaways, okay? So the most uh, important constraints for corn production in Indonesia are, uh, you know very well more than me, the uh, abiotic uh, and biotic stresses, mostly the diseases, weeds, uh, and some of the crop pests. Uh, like shoot flies or, or aphids or weevils. But the three key lepidopterans that actually affect our, as we know earlier, are you know, Asian corn border, corn earworm, and to some extent, common cutworm. Uh, there could be quite a few. I'm just naming uh, the major ones that are there in Indonesia. Uh, having said that, in the recent past, you have seen the invasion of this uh, new pest called Spodoptera fujipata. And interestingly, it came all the way from the other side of the world hopping through Africa, India, and at the end reached uh, Indonesia. And you know today, the recent reports early 2020 is that it's in Australia now, okay? So it, uh, the invasive nature of this pest is very, very intense. And, and, and once it establishes, it's going to be there for a long time. In 2019, uh, when, when uh, the pest arrived in uh, Indonesia, the the infestation levels to begin with were not really well recorded. And, and, and at that time, when I was visiting Indonesia, some of the parts of Sumatra and Java, uh, it, it still, the pest is establishing. So when you look at the spectrum, how it is in 2019, at the end of 2019, you see most of the Sumatra is affected. And of course, even Java. Today, when you, when you look at it, all the five islands, main islands have been affected pretty much with this insect. In 2020, uh, in, in the internal data suggests that it's, the trends remain the same. Uh, it could be due to many reasons. Uh, one, 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 one of the major reasons is that the pest is trying to establish still in Indonesia. And when it's establishing, the, the reproductive potential and the propensity will be very high. So whatever uh, technologies and products you keep applying, it keeps coming. And, and you, keep, you have to keep doing it for at least few seasons until you uh, bring that to the general equilibrium level, uh, if I may say, in entomological terms. So this is how the 2020 data, or 2019 late uh, data looks like. Uh, and and it, it's very clear that, again, uh, the islands of, island of regions of Sumatra uh, and Java are worst affected. And, and the uh, infestation levels that you're seeing is not normal. The threshold levels for fallar minimum are, you know, five times or four times lower than this. So we need to understand that it has not yet reached that general equilibrium level where we are comfortable uh, with uh, managing it with a simple one or two sprays. Right? We are not yet there in Indonesia. Uh, as part of the uh, control technologies, uh, BT con technologies have been uh, are being promoted in Asia for different pests, not just uh, follow me one. 
Asian corn borer being the main one, like I mentioned, and also uh, the other one is, uh, so, you know, stem borer, chylo, uh, besides corn earworm and Spodoptera litera, which are like secondary pests in, in this environment. So these are the uh, different products that are available in, in Asia and uh, in Philippines. Uh, 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 sorry. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Or, yes. Or, yes. Okay. yes. Can, can on? It's very clear. Please. Sorry. Sorry. Please. I heard some crosstalk. So yeah. mm -hmm. these are these are the products that that you that you find in the market today in Asia, in Philippines, Vietnam and most probably tomorrow in Pakistan, someday or other. But not all of these are going to be effective against fall armor, okay? We have to keep that in mind. Uh, there are a few more technologies that are coming in future into uh, countries like uh, country like Philippines. And, and these are more uh, pyramided products and, and, and uh, more than two genes being present in one product. So, just to give you an idea of how the landscape is developing in terms of uh, BT corn technologies as part of corn trade packages, okay? So why I'm saying corn trade package, when you look at uh, something like a VT double pro, uh, it does not have just insect resistant trait, but it also has a herbicide tolerant trait, uh, which is uh, uh, for glyphosate tolerance, okay? So that's why I'm, I'm, uh, I'm kind of mentioning it as a corn trade package when you look at the brands here. Overall, uh, we have quite a few technologies that are going to be in the landscape soon uh, in, the, in the cultivating countries as we go forward. So the uh, next few slides, I really want to talk about uh, uh, fall armyworm, uh, mon nine in the context of uh, pest management and fall armyworm efficacy. Yeah, you generally find that uh, people using the term MON89. It's a, it's a short form for MON89034, uh, which is a breeding stack of uh, VT Double Pro, the, the product that is sold uh, as an efficacious product against uh, Asian corn borer, other pests, and today against fall armyworm. Okay, so it's a breeding stack, meaning uh, two events are taken and they are, during the breeding process, they are combined into one product. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, MON89 has two genes, the CRY1A105 and CRY2AB. The uniqueness of these two genes is that they produce proteins which offer a, 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 a different modes of action, two modes of action against all the target pests. Okay? So there is no uh, or very, very, very low cross resistance between these two proteins in, in all the targets that have been tested at. So it's a, it's a unique product, and that's why it can be called as a pyramided product rather than a simple stack of mixing one or two genes and creating a product. Uh, like I mentioned, it offers a dual mode of action against all the three major targets that you have in Indonesia now. Um, of course, Asian corn borer is a primary pest. Uh, we, we understand that. Helicoverpi is kind of a secondary pest. It appears and it goes and comes back once in a while, whereas Spodoptera frugiperda uh, you know, one has to think of it as a secondary pest, but it's it's going to be, it is a major pest now in corn. And we have to see how its uh, dynamics are going to change if uh, uh, BT corn products are in the environment, okay? Uh, just to mention, the NK603 is the herbicide tolerant event present in the VT Double Pro product concept, and it offers tolerance to glyphosate, which actually is very helpful because in Philippines recently, we have been seeing that Fall armyworm is, is feeding on the weeds that are growing between the corn, which, which, which was like very unusual, very amazing thing that's happening. And this is in BT corn fields without feeding on the plant, it is feeding on the weeds that are around the plants. MON89, I, I, I'll refer it to as MON89 from, for ease of uh, you know, uh, presentation. Uh, it has been proven for the past decade or so across globe for its efficacy against fall armyworm. I am only sharing two references, one internal, the other one is a published, but there are several published uh, articles. Uh, it has proven its efficacy in South America, in, 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 uh, in Af South Africa, and, and also excellent technology being used uh, against various targets in, in uh, the U.S. So, uh, and in Asia, it is, it is being grown uh, for, for almost uh, a decade or eight, eight years or so from in Philippines and a uh, little less than that in Vietnam, okay? 
and then overall it has shown its uh, as its efficacy against all the targets and not only that it, it's a sustainability point of view it has it has it is standing very well against all its targets okay just to show you at the bottom most panel in the right side uh, it's it's a, it's a dual gene product so it offers better control than a single gene product like earlier first generation corn like monet 10 which has one gene just to give you an idea how a single gene product may not stand as much as a, a mon89 can withstand polar muon this the, the data that is being presented here is of uh, mon89 okay uh, against polar muon to mention so irm uh, uh, for for the sustainability of mon89 we generally use a irm strategy you can see on your screen there that it involves a, a refuge, uh, two modes of action already I mentioned, and we do a lot of assistance monitoring in Philippines and Sentinel site monitoring in, in all cultivating countries. We also have a very good industry and educational outreach that happens around here. Uh, we work uh, with other industry of in, in deployment of some of these strategies in a country. Having said that, we talk about high dose quite a bit, but, but what is high, high dose is, is always a question mark. So when you look at uh, a, a dose of a protein against uh, increased mortality, a susceptible population is easily gone with, with, at a very low levels of dose of the protein. Whereas a resistant population takes more dose or more protein to kill it. And if I may make a note here, there will be a naturally occurring resistant alleles in, in wild, even before introduction of a technology. And, and those cannot be killed with the dose of the protein, but those are very, very, very low frequency at, at one, one in a million that are existing in the environment. When these two mate, the susceptibles and resistant, you get heterozygous population. And the dose expression in the protein, uh, protein expression in the plant is sufficient to kill all these heterozygotes and susceptibles. And that's when you can call it an effective dose or a high dose uh, in a product, okay? Having said that, it has to be combined with refuge. So how does it work? Uh, uh, generally, uh, like I mentioned, there will be a resistant mutant allele there in the population, which is at a very low frequency. and when it gets produced in a BT, BT area, it needs, uh, it'll be overwhelmed with the number of susceptibles that get produced uh, from a non-BT. So the refuge is very essential to provide this high volume of susceptible insects. So when they mate, what happens is all these heterozygotes, which, which are getting produced after the mating, they die due to the exposure to the uh, BT protein. This is when there is a refuge. What will happen when there is no refuge, okay? So you'll find this, some of these surviving resistant individuals in a, in, a, in a BT plot. When there is no refuge, there is no these susceptibles coming from the refuge. And eventually what will happen is they start mating among themselves and it starts producing these resistant homozygotes. Once you see this, sorry, once you see these resistant homozygotes increasing in the environments, that's when you start seeing the problems with the product. So all these slides indicate that refuge is an integral part of the product concept, okay? There are different refuge strategies used across globe. Uh, many times uh, the product concept started with structured refuge. Uh, we also relied on a natural refuge, you know, uh, and community refuges, but the most followed are structured refuge and what we call today seed mixers. Structured refuge is a technically recommended strategy in, and it has very high IRM value. However, it also has very high practical challenges. Uh, earlier speaker, uh, Pati was uh, mentioning about the small farm holdings in Asia Pacific and Asia region in Indonesia specifically as well. These small farm holders, they don't like to plant structured refuges. This has been experienced in India, Philippines, Vietnam, you name any country, South Africa even to most extent and South America. So based on these grower compliance issue in terms of planting refuge, we slowly move towards a, a, a concept called seed blend. So it offers a lot of uh, IRM value, enhanced IRM value. And, and also in compliance point of view, uh, it is very easy because the grower does not need to do anything. The packaging itself will have seed 
mixed, the non-BT seed mixed in the BT seed and given. Okay, and it kind of reduces the complexity on the farmer's side. However, there is always a concern when you have seed blends around. Uh, it is the it is a fact that the insect could move from BT to non-BT and it will survive, and slowly the sublethal exposures could make it resistant. However, if it is a true pyramid, like I indicated earlier, with dual mode of action, this threat is greatly reduced. Okay. Additionally, there is also a concern that larvae move from non-BT to BT plant. Again, the, 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 the threat of its survival is mitigated by a pyramid. The pyramids can handle that because there are two modes of action acting against the insect. So overall, uh, if, if once it dies, uh, the redu reducing the effective refuge size and all these complex situations emerge. Uh, but just to summarize, a pyramid in a seed blend concept will offer you a better compliance better, uh, you know, kind of a moderate to better iron value and sustainability of the overall product concept and managing the insect. Having said this, I just want to emphasize that when 189 as a concept is a functionally and effective pyramid offering protection against many targets, uh, if I can say three targets here, whereas when you have two cryon class proteins mixed and sold, uh, it's not a true pyramid and it will end up being a, 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 a impact on overall uh, resistance management because you you will not be able to effectively delay the onset of resistance. So functionally effective pyramids help us in delaying onset of resistance in the field. Uh, just to make you a, uh, make a note here, uh, the high risk products, they impact even the other technologies with, which may have uh, the cryon class proteins. So in Asia, we have most of the products or all of the products based on cryon class proteins, except uh, Mon89 today and eventually the future technologies will have other proteins uh, as well, uh, kind of combined as a pyramid or a breeding stack and so on. Uh, to show you the, uh, kind of share you the experience on uh, Vietnam story, uh, like Padre Dang mentioned last year, uh, uh, Professor Randy Triciano and Padre Dang, they visited Vietnam. Uh, this is a great example of how you can manage polar mevum and uh, to kind of give you an idea, the data on the right indicates how still Mon89 is withstanding the fallen mevum damage in the North Vietnam area and also in the uh, Mekong Valley Delta, Mekong Delta, okay? And, and if you really look at it, the uh, person plants damaged, et cetera, they're, they're very, very, very low in, in, uh, in Mon89 with 5% uh, uh, refuge, refuge in a bag. Uh, any damage, the 2% you're seeing is the non-BT plants that are mixed in the uh, BT plants, okay? Uh, so uh, overall, uh, to tell you, uh, share with you, besides the uh, BT products that we have in Indonesia, we have other solutions that are being uh, promoted or developed for fallen mewam management in Indonesia. And, and one of the uh, big uh, product that we are, we are really confident about is Tetranilprol. It's sold as uh, Viago. Uh, I apologize for the brand name difference there. That's from Philippines. Uh, it's called Viago, and it's the same one, okay? And, and, and we also have a brochure that's developed for, for education purposes as part of the IPM approach, and, and we, we have been extensively using these in our education and training programs uh, internally and also even uh, when we engage with the stakeholders. I don't know why I'm seeing these things on here. Anyway. It's okay. Yeah. So sorry about that. Uh, the key takeaways, uh, I would say, uh, Mon89 is a proven uh, technology against uh, fall armyworm with very good resistance management uh, uh, package there. Uh, it's, it, it's, a, it's in a functionally effective pyramid, like I mentioned. Uh, besides this, uh, we are encouraging farmers or growers to follow IPM practices, like I mentioned. Anything, anything that can remove the alleles that may be surviving in the in a field or in a landscape through cultivation, clean cultivation practices like stubble destruction or weed management, 
and or or even some hoeing that farmers do in Asia in, in, during the season in cultivation practices, it's always good. And and lastly, we should we should be very clear about one thing: we cannot forget scouting and monitoring. Uh, most times, farmers tend to forget the scouting. If with fallow mealworm, the scouting between zero to forty-five days will will help. I am emphasizing this will will help for a long time for management of this insect in the in the in the in their fields in the region and for years to come. Okay, so scouting is key. Let's not forget that as as entomologist, as scientist, and as a crop protection specialist to promote it as we any time we talk about it. With those few words, I, I again thank you all for your attention, and uh, Terry Makasi. Okay, thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Parimi, for the uh, explanation and presentation. Uh, now uh, uh, we have uh, three speaker already presented the uh, papers, and now we would like to open for discussion. And uh, is uh, there are several questions uh, that uh, come out from the uh, uh, chatting. So then I would like to probably to what the call is to uh, share the question. Uh, first question come from Professor uh, Sahabuddin. So to Pak Gunawan. Uh, pertanyaannya sih sederhana nih Pak. Apakah biopestisidanya sudah banyak tersedia di toko-toko di seluruh Indonesia? Uh, mungkin itu jawabannya Pak. Satu. Uh, bisa langsung dijawab Pak Gunawan. Terus kemudian pertanyaan kedua juga untuk Pak, Pak Gunawan. Uh, Prinsip pengendalian dengan agen hayati atau biopestisida adalah yang efisien, tetapi harus juga efektif. Apakah penggunaan biopestisida industri masih efisien dan efektif bagi para petani? Nah, ini kelihatannya ke Pak Gunawan masih ada lagi satu pertanyaan lagi dari, dari Pak Wiwi, ya, dari Bu Wiwi kelihatannya dari Wiwi Kustiwi. Uh, merek dagang apa Pak yang paling uh, efektif digunakan dan kemudian uh, bisa apakah uh, produknya bisa mematikan telur dan berapa lama interpar aplikasinya. Three question to uh, Pak Gunawan. If uh, you can respond to this uh, three question please Pak Gunawan. Oke, okay, terima kasih buat pertanyaan Merandang. Oke, okay, pertanyaan pertama saya akan jawab bahwasanya uh, ketersediaan produk kami sekarang mulai banyak di toko-toko di daerah apa di daerah apa di daerah sumber apa ya? Sumber penanaman ya. Tapi kita juga memfasilitasi penjualan di marketplace. Jadi kalau misalnya Anda yang butuh di online, di Facebook, di Instagram, kita ada biopesticide di Instagram, kita ada Facebook, kita akan arahkan ke marketplace. Contoh Tokopedia, Shopee, dan beberapa lagi ya. Itu kita buka. Kedua, kalau masalah efektivitas ya, Kita selama ini mencoba itu cukup baik ya cukup baik penyemprotan tiga sampai empat kali maksimal ya nah, itu cukup baik di mana fase-fase utama ketika ada penerbangan itu eh, segera semprot emang benar ya eh, mikroba tersebut tidak tidak membunuh telur tidak membunuh telur tapi ingat ketika eh, ulat tersebut menetas makanan pertama daripada ulat tersebut adalah cangkang telurnya sendiri. Nah, itu yang akan mengakibatkan si ulat uh, apa larva, larva, larva ulat tersebut yang yang fase awal itu akan cepat infeksi. Nah, kita semua paham bahwasanya pengendalian daripada ulat itu paling gampang di fase-fase awal. Nah, oke. Okay. Dan kedua, yang ketiga ya, ketiga itu produk. Produk apa yang paling kita prefer itu ada dua, dua jenis produk, Pak. Ada Metarizep dan ada BT Plus. Nah, kenapa itu harus dua produk? Kita tahu pak bahwasanya BT itu kan uh, sel sel BT itu uh, kita berikan ketika ketika ada hamanya nah, ada hamanya karena bakteri di alam itu uh, tidak akan tahan lama tapi kita gunakan tambahan sebab bevaria bevaria jamur jamur itu lebih sustain di alam lebih tahan di alam sehingga umur umur preventifnya lebih panjang. Oleh karena itu selalu kita sarankan dalam dalam satu produk adalah kita memix antara uh, bacillus ya bacillus dengan 
metalizer apa metalizer metalizer isinya adalah bevari uh, basiana sama metalizium so kita combine penyemprotan tersebut nah uh, kalau untuk bagaimana uh, tingkat biaya yang muncul sampai saat ini biaya yang muncul daripada pengaplikasiannya itu hampir uh, sama atau lebih rendah daripada pesida kimia mungkin begitu pak nandang Baik, terima kasih Pak Gunawan atas uh, penjelasannya. Uh, barangkali mungkin bagi para penanya tadi, uh, kalau masih uh, ada yang mau ditanyakan, silahkan chatting lagi. Nanti kita kami akan uh, sajikan lagi. Um, we have also another question. So probably I think this, this question is uh, to Dr. Parimi. So uh, Dr. Parimi, uh, this question uh, came from uh, Mr. Effendi. Uh, Is the BT corn considered as the GM corn or not? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. So all all BT corn technologies are genetically modified uh, corn technologies. Okay. But not uh, the other way around. Okay. Uh, second question. Uh, there are three questions actually come to to you and uh, four. Now the, the okay. second question is uh, from uh, uh, Professor Sahabudin. Uh, some people mentioned that the development of spodoptera resistant to BT corn. Some yes. people said that one. How effectiveness if is this technology in managing the fall armyworm? First question. Okay. Second, uh, the second question uh, from uh, kelembagaan uh, pengendalian uh, Pak Berry here. What is the best strategy for farmers, not only in Indonesia, uh, but around the world, that to control for armyworm, especially for countries uh, in the equatorial? Uh, the second question may uh, answer by uh, by you or, or 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 maybe Dr. Pati. Is this technology okay. in? Uh, the, 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 the third question is maybe is the, uh, definitely for you, Dr. Parimi. What is the recommended ratio for BT corn and refugee corn? Refugee corn. Okay. Okay, let, let me start with the let me start with the third question because that's very easy. So so uh, like I mentioned uh, in in Asia the recommended ratio as on date is five percent seed mix. Okay, so you're you're mixing the non BT seed with the BT seed and selling the product, and 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 we we are also evaluating these kinds of strategies very dynamic way, and and when we perceive that there is a higher risk of Uh, 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 due to pest emergence or like invasive species that we are seeing now, or some sort of resistance risks that we are uh, perceiving over a period of time, once you grow the BT corn there, we evaluate it and refine the strategy. So there are occasions where we increase the ratio of this uh, refuge mix in the seed blends as well. Okay, so as on date, the concept in Asia is 5% uh, seed uh, mix or seed blend, we call it. So, okay. The second question, the first, the first one that you asked is a very, very important question for all of us, which I did not want to bring in my presentation due to lack of time, but it's important for us to know in this region. Yes, uh, uh, you know, Pasha uh, Buddin, uh, uh, you asked a very right question, and, and uh, Fall on Vivam reported resistance to BT corn products in, in South America. And there is there is a there is a real uh, uh, trend to this resistance development, and and it started with Fallon Mewam developing resistance to one product in in Puerto Rico that is actually the first report ever for BT product resistance I believe if I'm not wrong, it started with that, and when the product started getting uh, deployed in Brazil, they were first single gene products. And these single gene products deployment over a period of time impacted the overall resistance development in Brazil. And also the movement of insects in the region in itself, I believe, impacted development of resistance to other BTCon products. So today, even if I want to mention uh, uh, the Cryban A105 in Mon89 is impacted in Brazil. And that is due to the prior launch of single gene products in Brazil. But when you really look at it, when you launch it as a pyramided product, the efficacy point of view and sustainability or durability point of view, it's going to be different, okay? okay. And, and when you ask me how effective is the technology, if I may, if I may use that word, the definitely, definitely the dual gene technologies will be more effective 
But I should also say this, the only single gene technology that has stood very, very well in terms of uh, all these uh, high intense, uh, intensity of populations of polar myon has been one of the uh, MIR 162 product uh, in, in, uh, uh, in Americas, and it has come into Philippines now. But overall, the two gene products or dual mode of action products are much, much better than single mode of action, if I can put it. Okay. Um, I think that yeah. the, yeah. the second question you had was on uh, uh, how tropical environments would be. If I can also answer that briefly, since uh, I'm an yeah. ecologist. Um, tropical environments pose the highest risk when you look at polar bear walk. So how do you manage the insect in the earlier years, because it's an invasive species, in the earlier years is going to influence how the pest is going to be in the future years. Hmm. If you can bring down the populations now with all the available tools, let it be insecticides or BT corn or, or or let it be made in confusion or any other technique, the most reduction of population today will actually influence uh, the future years, okay? So tropical environments are the high risk environments for polar mewam establishment. And if you really look at it across the globe, the polar mewam invasions and infestations happen very effectively and it's in a stable form with, between 23 and a half degrees north and south pretty much. So tropical and subtropical are the high risk environments. Okay, okay. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Parimi. Uh, is there any comment from Mr. Pati? No, I think um, I would like to add uh, what uh, uh, Srinivas was talking about. Um, the, the fall army worm is new to Asia Pacific region and it has not reached the equilibrium level. So many farmers um, believe that it is it will be seen only up to 45 days or 50 days. But um, you know, as we progress into a couple of seasons, I think we will see that equilibrium and uh, we will see infestation levels uh, post that 45 days period as well. So we need to come with technologies that we can prevent and manage things well throughout the season. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Pati and Dr. Srinivas for the uh, answering the question. Uh, there are also uh, several questions again coming uh, here from the chatting. Uh, the uh, question is, uh, is uh, addressed to Dr. Pati. So the question from uh, Ahmad Rizali, uh, how many percent of the activity of mating disruption to reduce the population of the pest? Are there any side effect of using uh, this mating distraction technology? Uh, Dr. Patip, you could uh, maybe uh, uh, answer to this question, please. Yeah, thanks for asking this question. And uh, it's important question to understand that, um, you know, to effective, to have an effective mating disruption or effectively disrupt the mating process, we need to have more than 90% mating disruption. Yeah. So we need to completely saturate the whole environment in the field to effectively uh, manage uh, the natural calling of the females. So we need to camouflage that. So for that, we need to have more than 90% mating disruption. Okay. So there is another question I say uh, is uh, addressed to Dr. Patis. Uh, the question is come from... Uh, what they call is uh, Dr. Uh, Jok uh, Joko Friono, by Joko Friono. Uh, uh, in your experience, what is the wind direction that changes? Uh, like, for instance, in Indonesia, it's changed from uh, a direction from uh, uh, one uh, direction to another direction. Uh, on the effectiveness of uh, disruption strategy. Yeah, that's a very important question because uh, that actually dictates uh, how well the pheromone cloud is steady in that environment. So that is the reason uh, we need to um, manage mating disruption in a larger hectares. Uh, so why, why we say it as a larger hectares, five hectares to 10 hectares? Because, you know, as we understand, fall army worm uh, moths are really you know, strong flyers. Unlike uh, Skipophaga incipulas, which is yellow stem borer, which can, which is 
locally migratory. So follow our MUA moths can fly to our really long distances. So we need to have um, uh, larger acres of mating disruption in the field so that we don't have the edge effects. Yes, wind direction is the most important thing where the pheromone cloud can be diluted at, at some points. Uh, however, when we put this in a larger hectares, we have not seen a, a lot of uh, edge effects, what we call as, or um, uh, where the best incidence is seen on the edges of the crop. Yes, it is important, apart from the temperature, relative humidity, which also dictates uh, uh, the effectiveness of the pheromone cloud. Okay. Okay. That, uh, th thank you, Dr. Pati. Uh, there is another question also uh, coming uh, for uh, specifically to you. So uh, the question is came from uh, uh, first is from uh, Bambang Supeno. Uh, the, what is the light uh, trapping uh, if they are conversing to the what that uh, will be uh, likely by Spodoptera plugiferda? So uh, that's the um, on the light. So how many? How many? I say maybe five watt, ten watt, something. Some fault, fault is meaning fault amper. The second question is come uh, from uh, Pak Yusuf Hidayat here. Uh, can the uh, can the PROPP product uh, to certain extent disrupted the other uh, uh, related species like Spodoptera litura? Yeah, so I'll take the second question first. Um, yes, you know, what I what I mentioned was earlier, pheromones are very species specific. So we need to have a different product for each species. So yes, uh, you know, uh, other species also can be effectively reduced if we use uh, uh, those pheromones um, as a blend. Uh, if we see Sporopter litura uh, and Helicovarp are also damaging uh, certain crops, we can also implement mating disruption in those. Yep. Okay. okay. And Patanda, can you repeat that first question ah, again? The, 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 second, uh, the second question is the, on the fourth ampere uh, on the light. So they are asking to which color of the light they are uh, uh, preferred by the, for trapping. This one is if you have any experience so far on the light. Um, so yeah. Uh, the light you mean the light trap light trap yeah this one um uh because we're not trapping anything in mating disruption right so we're not we're just confusing the male moths uh, uh, to keep looking for the females so we're not trapping anything we're not killing anything so there is no effect of light yeah so so the, the question of the um, uh uh is said that uh uh spot up will prefer to what light what color so that's maybe if you can, if you have experience on that one. Um, I, I, I think, you know, most of the insects will get attracted to color yellow. Um, so I would say I'm not very, uh, you know, I, I have I have very little understanding. Maybe, uh, maybe Dr. Parmi can help you here. Well, uh, yeah, as, as I see it, uh, they, they just get attracted to these incandescent bulbs most of the time. So. So any so, light, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. okay. Yeah, thank but, you. But, yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you, the, uh, uh, Dr. Pati and Dr. Srinipas. Uh, there's a, a question uh, to Pak Gunawan here. Uh, apakah dampak samping dari aplikasi pestisida entomopatogen terhadap serangga non-target? Uh, kalau pun ada, bagaimana mungkin penjelasannya Pak Gunawan? Silakan. Ada pertanyaan dari. Uh, dari Pak Ahmad Rizali. Oke okay, Pak, terima kasih Pak uh, informasinya. Sampai saat ini ya cukup baik ya. Mungkin di dalam grup ini juga Pak, di dalam web ini juga banyak entomologi. Jadi saya rasa sebenarnya jawabannya udah pasti. Di mana uh, efek daripada entomopatogen ini tidak berefek kepada para predator dan justru itu melindungi populasi predator itu sendiri. Uh, sehingga uh, dia benar-benar mengendalikan ekosistem pak. Jadi hmm. tidak ada efek mudaratnya pak ya. Dan cukup cukup mengembirakan lah sampai saat ini untuk apa untuk aplikasinya terutama di padi, di mana pengendalian hama wereng di padi itu sangat sukses di Indonesia uh, dengan menggunakan uh, produk metalisasi sampai saat ini pak. Mungkin itu pak ya. informasinya. Terima kasih Pak 
Pak Gunawan. So there's a question. I think maybe the this one is related to on the pheromone. So uh, from Pak Ah Pak Ahmad Pak Ahmad Rifan Muzaki. Uh, is there any effect of the sunlight when the pheromone is uh, placed in the field? Because there will be a, a, a what because uh, uh, what is the pheromone used in the field uh, to because it placed in the under sun sunlight? Is there any effect on that one? Maybe Papati, if you can uh, further ex, uh, uh, respond to this question. Yes, um, yes, it is. It is very important to protect the active ingredient uh, from degradation through temperature, sunlight, uh, those environmental factors. So what we have taken care in, what we have to take care is uh, so that it, the active ingredient is well protected in the LDPE matrix dispensers so that um, these active ingredients do not degrade uh, uh, faster. So the idea is once we install the dispensers in the field, they will be there throughout the season up to 90 to 100 days. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Pati, for explanation. Uh, one, uh, another question is maybe uh, to Dr. Pati or Dr. Uh, Srinipas uh, or maybe Pak Gunawan. So, Pak, from uh, the, the question is come from uh, Bu Nur Faida. Uh, what is the row spacing that uh, uh, affect maybe a, a, a relationship between row spacing with the Spodoptera frugiferda? If there is maybe any, any, anyone that who can respond to this question. Is there any effect of row spacing to the uh, I mean, uh, Spodoptera purgiferda intensity? That's the question, please. I would say it, it, it really affects because, you know, um, as soon as we see this, the Spodoptera purgiferda larvae can go from uh, one plant to the other plant with silken threads. So the, the, the row, if the row spacing is, is smaller, then I would say the, the effect of larvae distribution uh, will be higher. Mm -hmm. So the, the incidence of fall army bomb probably will be higher if the low row spacing is, is, is lower. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pati. So now maybe the question came to uh, Dr. Srinipas. Uh, the question has come from uh, Pak Joko Priyono from Bogor University. What is the status of the registration of your uh, BT corn in Indonesia? So maybe if you uh, can uh, okay. elaborate so, this. So basically, uh, in, in Indonesia, uh, with the BT corn that we have, that is Mon 89, we are basically waiting for the, for the guidelines of these uh, stack products to come with and, and uh, uh, the policy to evolve and enable for deployment of this product. Uh, while I'm saying that, uh, I would like to mention here that we already have Mon89 and uh, by NK603 VT Double Pro as a product concept in Asia. It's approved in Vietnam and Philippines, which is, which is uh, you know, similar region that we belong to. And it's already proven effective. It's, it's uh, proven safe from different studies. So uh, if I may say here or propose like uh, to, the, to this audience, August audience here, mm -hmm. it will be more important to see how fast we can bring such technologies, uh, anything similar to this and, and BTCon technology like Mon89 into environment. There are always limitations that, uh, that, that, that could uh, uh, bring these to, you know, kind of act while bringing these technologies into a country, which I understand totally. But, but uh, we are ready with the product in a way to bring it. Uh, it, it, uh, it all depends on how the uh, regulatory environment evolves. And, and if, if, if we have uh, uh, immediate steps taken, I think uh, uh, we, we are ready to bring it anytime to Indonesia. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Srinipas for the response to the question. Uh, Pak Simon Sihar Simon Juntak also has the question. Uh, to I think this one is uh, uh, the question is that, uh, addressed to Dr. Pati here. How long the uh, the product can uh, uh, persist in the field, and uh, how many minimum hectare size uh, the product can cover for effective uh, result to get the uh, for, for Asporoptera pugiferda? 
Okay. Um, as I as I said, I was mentioning um, the product. Uh, you know, it it should be. We we made sure that product will be lasting long for the season. So once they put these dispensers in the field uh, at the stage of sowing, they just need to uh, take these dispensers away um, uh, when they are ready to harvest. So uh, a season long control is what we're looking at because as we understand the insecticide applications can be done only at a certain height of the crop. Uh, if it reaches beyond that certain height of the crop, it is very difficult to make any insecticide applications. So as the pest reaches equilibrium, we will be seeing, uh, you know, they, they start feeding on tassels, they start feeding on the silk, they start feeding on the corn cobs and the ears as well. So we need to protect those, you know, important produce for the farmers. So we need to make sure that uh, we made sure that uh, the product lasts long for season. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Patti. So, so far is, uh, is there any, any further question on this one? So we can maybe uh, uh, this three uh, speaker uh, talking about the uh, pheromone, uh, bio, bio pesticide, uh, as well as the uh, GM, uh, uh, GM uh, corn. Uh, three uh, three uh, type of technology can maybe used as the part of the integrated crop management of uh, corn to control for armyworm. So if uh, there is if there is a uh, no more other uh, question. Uh, maybe I can, I would like maybe to return to the uh, uh, what it calls the, the MC, uh, please, Ubulia. Hello. Terima kasih. Ya, Pak. Pertanyaannya sudah selesai semua. Ya. Ya. tidak ada lagi. Kalau masih ada, silakan. Kita masih ada waktu. Ah, uh, yeah. Silakan. Uh, if there is no other question, so I would like uh, we should uh, applause to the three uh, outstanding speakers, uh, Dr. Pati, Dr. Srinipas, and Pak Gunawan. So thank you for. Uh, uh, an outstanding uh, presentation. Uh, it can be contribute to the uh, very good uh, what it calls uh, management of the fall army worm in Indonesia uh, in the future. Hopefully that we uh, we can uh, uh, manage it uh, properly. Then uh, it, it cannot be a, a main constraint for the corn production in the future. So thank you. Then now uh, I return it to the uh, MC for further uh, uh, event. Thank you very much. Bulia, time to use. Ya, terima kasih Pak Nandang telah memimpin jalannya presentasi dan diskusi ini. Terima kasih juga kepada Pak Gunawan and thank you to Dr. Marini and Dr. Pati. Next, PI uh, will give the electronic certificate to all the speakers and also moderators, we will, which will be symbol. symbol uh, maybe, uh, maybe we can uh, group photo first. <laughs> 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 So maybe uh, Dr. Patip, you can uh, on your uh, Zoom, uh, what it calls, and Dr. Srinipas, Dr. Gunawan, Pak, yeah. and uh, Professor uh, Dadang, and others, then maybe we can uh, have a big picture, Pak Nazir. Yes. Please. Yeah. Menunggu yang lainnya, Pak. Ya. Yeah. Dion kan, Dion kan, uh, please on your uh, video. Yeah. Ada dua layar, ada dua kali pengambilan. Dua kali, ya, yeah, boleh yeah. tidak, nggak apa-apa pak. One, two, three. Once again, one, two, okay, yes. Okay, okay thank you. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Next, Pei will give the electronic certificate to all the speakers and also moderator, which uh, symbolically which, uh, will be given by Professor Beda. Uh, this is for the Dr. Pati. Thank you very much for your presentation. Nice presentation, Dr. Pati. This is just a certificate for you. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is for Pak Gunawan. Thank you, Pak Gunawan. Yeah. Uh, I want to go again to the pengalengan ya, Pak. Siap, Pak. <laughs> Siap, Pak. Adin. Tanaman lebih banyak lagi. <laughs> okay. Thank you. And this is for the Dr. Sinipas Parimi. Thank you very much for the excellent Thank presentation you. today. Uh, okay. Hope you, uh, I will meet you again, maybe in Jakarta. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. Okay, Pak Nandang. Okay, terima kasih, Pak Nandang. <laughs> Thank you, Pananda. Terima kasih. Uh, very, very good today. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Interactive uh, yeah. discussion. Uh, uh, Partis, Partisipan. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you, thank you Pananda. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, bye. Okay. Uh, demikian acara seminar online PI pusat seri ketiga telah berakhir. Terima kasih kepada semua peserta atas kehadiran dan partisipasinya, serta kepada semua panitia yang pas kerjasama sehingga seminar hari ini dapat terselenggara dengan baik. Mohon maaf jika ada kekurangan dalam penyelenggaraannya selama Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat okay. siang. Dokter Pati, thank you. Dokter thank you. Pami, thank you very much. Pak Gunawan, thank you ya. Selamat siang. Selamat siang. Selamat siang. Selamat siang. Selamat siang. Selamat siang. Selamat siang.